letter F, let's draw a frog. The frog we're actually going to be drawing today is a red-eyed tree frog. So let's get started. You're going to need three things today. Same things that we always use, a pencil, an eraser. You can use the one on the end of your pencil if you'd like, and a piece of paper. Remember, I only use the paper that comes out of the printer. That's what I drew this on, just plain old copy paper. But if you have something nicer, that's fine too. Go ahead and gather those three items up. And then while you're looking around your house, if you have some crayons, you might want to use those for coloring your frog when we're done. That's all I use for coloring my frog. I just use my Crayola box of crayons for coloring him. So go ahead and pause the video, gather those three items, a pencil, a piece of paper, an eraser, maybe some crayons for later, and then come on back. All right, let's begin. I'm so excited to do this lesson. I put it to a vote on the letter F, and this was the animal that you chose on my Facebook group. So let's start talking about our red-eyed tree frog. This is another picture that I drew of the frog, which I'll go into a little bit later, the same exact picture. I just colored him a little different, but we'll do that at the very end. So right now, we're going to be looking at the colors of this frog. Oh my goodness, check him out. Look at his big bulging eyes. He's got a bright lime green skin, and then he has these huge red eyes, orange fingers and toes, and then this bright flash of bright, bright blue on the insides of his legs, as well as the sides of his body with a hint of yellow too. Now, when we are doing our drawing today, you're gonna wanna make your paper horizontal, which is long. So I drew my paper, this, remember this is how I do my paper, I just draw with a marker ahead of time. You're not gonna be drawing this box on your paper. You're just gonna use your paper, but you wanna make sure that it is this way, long today, which is called horizontal. All right, let's begin. For the first part of our drawing, we always find the center of our paper. So I'm gonna go right over here and find the center. I usually just take my fingers and make a plus sign and then kind of hold my finger in the middle to make sure it's the middle and make a dot. So go ahead and make a dot with your pencil. We'll erase that at the very end. We only use that to kind of help us in proportioning our animal so that it doesn't get too big or too small or hang off the side of the paper. Now, right around that, we're going to start by making an oval on its side. So I'm going to teach you a trick for drawing circles and ovals today that I haven't showed you yet before. And that is to take your hand and very softly hover it over your paper before you lay your hand down. So while you're holding your pencil in your hand, you're not going to immediately start drawing the oval or the circle. What you want to do is hover your finger over the paper like this and move it around in an oval. And the oval is going to be on its side. And then very lightly start to touch down. Now, when you do that, you're going to end up with a much softer oval or circle. You're going to have a few. And then you can erase the ones you don't like at the very end. So go ahead and practice trying that right now. Pause the video and then turn it back on when you're ready. This is going to be the stomach of our frog. Now we're going to go up and we're going to do the same exact thing, another oval on its side, and we're going to overlap it over this one. This is the body. Now we're going to overlap this one, and that's going to be the head. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to move my pencil in an oval shape on its side up here, and I'm going to bring it around and around and around, and then lightly touch down and make my oval on top. So both ovals are on their sides. Okay, now, once you have your two ovals, don't worry about all the ones you don't like. We can erase all those as we go along. Now, we don't need this dot in the middle anymore. Go ahead and erase that. And then we're going to come up here to the top of his head, and we're going to start to create his eyes. Now, the red-eyed tree frog has a different type of eye than many frogs. His style of eye is actually very different because they rest way up high on the top of his head. So right up here, we're going to draw a large, tall oval that's kind of wide on one side. And we're going to do the same thing on the other. Now you want to make sure that your proportions are even. We don't want one eye small, one eye big. And then inside that eye, we're going to add his pupil. Now I'm going to show you the photograph again so that you can look at his pupil. His pupil looks kind of like a football shape, doesn't it? And it's standing up straight up and down like this. 
these pupils are also very similar to a cat's pupil. So I'm gonna make a dot right up here toward the top of his eye. And I'm gonna make a dot toward the bottom of his eye. And then I'm gonna create the letter C from the top of the dot to the bottom, and then a backward C on the other side. Now that pupil will get larger when he's in the dark and smaller when there's a light shining on him. So we want to make it kind of wide for now. So we have a bigger pupil. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to make a dot at the top, a dot toward the bottom, create the letter C and a backward C on the other side. And then I'm going to add a highlight, which I always do with all of my drawings, where I'm going to draw a little letter U up here inside the pupil. And then I'm going to lightly color it in. You're using your pencil right now. Later, we can color it in darker when we get to our colored pencil or our crayon. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. That will just be to remind us later to color it in. All right. Now, once we've done that, we're going to go in and start to add a little bit more detail to his eyes. So his eyes are so unique because they're up on the top of his head. He can actually see very similar to the way our chameleon that we did in our letter C animal can see 360 degrees. Now, the difference is his eyes are like lighthouses up on top of his head. So he's got this great vision all around his eyes. But his eyes can't move interdependently the way that the chameleon's eyes could move. So when he has these eyes placed so high in his head, he can see when predators are coming. So we're going to draw his upper eyelids. We're going to start right up here at the top of the circle. We're going to make a little dot. And then we're going to make a very gentle curve that comes and kind of follows the shape of his eye. So here is his eye here. I'm going to darken it so you can see it. And I just drew a little curve that comes down. That's going to be his eyelid. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, making a little dot kind of right up here at the top, and then swooping it around and back down to the top of his head. Go ahead and do your two eyes the same way I'm doing mine. All right, now we're going to erase this line here. We don't need that anymore. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And now we're going to create his lower eyelid. And so we're going to go right here at the bottom. And we're just going to make a very tiny little fold right there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, a little tiny fold. And then erase the line inside that fold. All right. Now we're going to start to create his mouth. So when we're working on his mouth, We're going to be drawing this little curved line, and it's very close to his eyes. We'll add his nostrils later. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to find right where these two eyelids come in, and we're going to extend it a little bit farther into his head. So I'm just going to make a little curve that goes in and in. Now that's going to help us place his nostrils which are going to go right underneath that. So I'm going to go here and here, make two tiny little dots for his nostrils. And we want to make sure his lip is very close to his eyes. When I first was drawing this, I was drawing his mouth way down too low. So what I'm going to do is right here underneath those nostrils, I'm just going to make a little frown. Kind of looks like he has a tiny little mouth right now. And I have a slight curve to it. Now I'm going to connect the side of his face up and around on both sides. So I'm going to make a little curve here and a little curve here. And I'm going to bring this curve down and then back up again. See how it swooped down a little bit and back up? And then this side the same way, down and back up again until it connects in the middle. So now we have his upper lip for his mouth. And then as we're working, any lines that you don't want, just go in and erase. 
I'm going to retrace this line up here between his eyes. And now we're going to draw his lower lip, which is just another parallel line, which just means we're matching the line right above it for his lower lip. And then his chin. So we're just going to continue this little line right here about halfway in and continue the bottom of this oval here about halfway in. And then we're going to erase all this in the middle. We don't need any of this anymore. And all we have to do now is just go like this and give him a little fold right there. Okay, let's move on now to his arms, his legs, and those cool fingers and toes. I can't wait to tell you a little bit about those facts. So we're gonna start right up here where his cheeks are, or his chin is, and I'm gonna draw his shoulder. So I'm gonna draw a little bump on this side. I'm gonna match it on this side. And then we're gonna draw the letter L. So I'm gonna go out and back down. Make sure it's away from the chest here. And then I'm gonna match it on the side out and back down. Now before we move on, let's kind of check our length of our arms and make sure that they're even. We're gonna add the hands at the bottom. So we don't want the bottom part of our hands too long. So you might need to erase them if you made them a little bit too long. And you also wanna make sure that this is about the same length. You can check by using your fingers or uh, you can use a, a ruler. I never use a ruler, I just use my finger. So when I was drawing, let me get my black and white version. When I was drawing this, I just measured with my fingers and it was about two fingers, maybe a little bit over two fingers on my drawing for the top of his arm. And then I matched it on this side. It's about two and a half fingers on this side. And I matched it on this side. And so when you're drawing yours, yours might be different. You might have a bigger piece of paper. So don't necessarily measure with two fingers, just what you think looks the right proportion. And then I'm gonna draw the inside of the arm. So I'm just gonna go right here and match it. And then bring it down. And then we're just gonna close the bottom of the wrist off by making a little curve like that. It'll turn into a wrinkle in its hand later. But for now, just leave it like that. So now we're gonna create these really cool fingers. So we're gonna start right here on the inside and draw a short line coming in. This is gonna be his thumb. I'm gonna match it on this side, a short line coming in. And then we're gonna draw three longer fingers here. So we're gonna go one, two, now make this one a little bit longer, three. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, one, two, make that one a little bit longer because the middle finger is longer, three. Now these are actually not gonna be his fingers. I'm gonna teach you a little trick for making his fingers look real. Right now, these are just going to be the bones inside of his fingers. I'm gonna teach you a kind of a, a tool trick to help you draw his fingers that look more like frog fingers. So here's my trick. We're gonna call this our race track and we're gonna use our pencil as our race car. And a race car is going to drive around the track. We don't want it to bump into the track because obviously if you're driving a race car, you don't want to crash. So all we're going to do is start right here where his wrist is and we're going to draw a line parallel, which just means right next to that bone. So we're going to go parallel to it. And when we get to the end of it, we're going to make a U-turn around it. See how it made a little bump on the end? And then we're going to bring it back parallel. So we don't ever want to bump into the racetrack. All right, now we're going to go down to the next finger. Same thing, go out, U-turn, which is a little bump on the end, and then back in. Go to the next finger. You're drawing right next to that line. Make a bump and go back in. And your final finger out, loop, and back. Now, once you've done that, we will erase those lines, those racetrack lines later, once we're done with both hands. Go ahead and now retrace the same pattern on the other side. The first one, the short one, is the thumb. Loop it around, bring it back. Then the finger, 
parallel, bring it back. Parallel just means we're going right next to that line. Make sure to make that little bump on the end. When you're finished, we're going to go back in now and find our eraser and erase the bones out of the middle. So I'm, you can use the end of your pencil for erasing. You can use an eraser. The erasers I use are called magic rub erasers, but you don't have to have that. You can just use the end of your pencil. Here, I'll use the end of the pencil and I'll erase mine. Bet you didn't know an eraser can erase a whiteboard marker. So I'm erasing the bones out of my hand. Now, as you erase, I'm going to tell you a cool fact about those fingers. So a frog, all frogs, but especially the red-eyed tree frog, has this amazing ability to grab onto wet surfaces, even wet leaves, by secreting the sticky glue that comes out of his bottom of his hands. So he has these suction cups, but he also can secrete this mucus. And it's very sticky, like glue, and it helps him to grasp onto things, especially when he is jumping. Now, the wonderful thing about that is that when he's sleeping at night, he can hide underneath a leaf and sleep upside down, and no one can find him. So when predators are out looking for something to eat, he can hide underneath the leaves, and they'll never discover him. Another cool trick about the frog and his hands is that he can grasp onto tiny, tiny branches and leaves, or he can even stick to glass. So he's really able to hide in lots of different places. Not that there's glass out in the wilderness, but the, there are some really wet leaves that he can hide inside. Now, one thing that he does for camouflaging is that he will close off his hands, his feet, his body, He'll tuck his head underneath and he'll close his eyes. And when he does that, all he looks like is just a green bump on a leaf. He closes his eyes and that closes off that bright red eye. He tucks his fingers and his toes underneath his body like this. He tucks his head down and he closes his eyes. And when he does that, all he looks like is a big green bump on a log or on a leaf. And that way the predators will walk right past him and not see him. Now, I will tell you a few more facts after we draw a little bit more. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go around and we're going to retrace his chest. So I'm just going to retrace this line. And now we're going to move on to drawing his back legs. Now, when we first draw his back legs, they're going to kind of look like fairy wings. So I'm going to come right up here and I'm going to draw this leg kind of bent behind his body. So I'm going to start right about where his cheek is, and I'm just going to draw a line that comes out, loops around, and comes back. See how that kind of looks like a fairy wing? Now I'm going to match it on this side, so I'm going to do the same thing right where it is on this cheek. I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to go out, loop it around, and bring it back. And then once you draw that, you always want to check your work and make sure that the legs are about the same size, the same width, Mine are a little pointed on the end, but yours don't have to be. They could be rounded. And then we're going to add a little curve line in here. It's going to kind of look like a leaf. And don't bring it all the way to the end. That's the fold in his leg, because his leg is kind of bent up like this. So there's a fold right there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then I'm going to add a little skinnier part of his leg here. And a little skinnier part of his leg here. So this is his leg. Now, the legs on a tree frog are so strong that he can jump 150 times his length. So if to give you an idea of how long that is, so 150 times his length, and he's very tiny, he's only about this big, but that would be like you and I standing and then crouching down with no running start and jumping and being able to jump over not one, not two, but three buses. So picture your school bus at school, if you've seen a school bus or a bus on the road, and that's like us bending down and then springing forward with these superpowers and being able to jump over one, two, three buses with no running start. That is how strong the tree frog's legs are that he can jump. Isn't that amazing? I think that's a really cool fact. 
All right, let's move on to his back toes now. So we're gonna do the same thing we did for his hands. So I'm gonna draw three lines this time, not four. So I'm gonna start right here, kind of where his back uh, ankle is and draw a line coming out. I'm gonna match it on this side. And we wanna make these lines a tiny bit longer because his back toes are longer because we need that pressure to be able to jump and he needs that buoyancy of that long toe to really give him a good push. And then I'm gonna draw another line coming out like this, kind of like a V shape. I'm gonna match that on this side. And then I'm gonna draw one more line in the middle that's a little bit longer. That middle toe is gonna to be longer, just like on the finger. Now remember how we did the racetrack before? We're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna draw a parallel line next to this with a little bump on the end. Remember that toe's got that funny little knob on the end. Do you see that little bump on the end? That's what we're doing. That's why we're making that U-turn around the edge. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw it out, curve it around and back. I'm gonna do that for each toe. I'm gonna tuck it back up underneath his arm right here because that would be a part of his foot hiding underneath his arm. I'm gonna match it on the other side. And then we're gonna take our eraser and erase the lines inside the toes whenever you're done. Now remember, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video and come back whenever you're ready. Get your eraser and let's start erasing those bones out of the legs. Did you know that frogs are on every continent of the world except for Antarctica? I didn't know that. But the red-eyed tree frog, they're pretty much found in Central America and in Mexico. All right. I'm almost done erasing all the bones inside my feet. My frog is almost done. I'm gonna go in and add a couple more little wrinkles and then I'll tell you a few more facts about the red-eyed tree frog. So right up here where his armpit is, let's erase this little oval part there and there. We don't need that anymore. We're gonna erase the line inside of his tummy if you have any extra lines you don't wanna keep. And we're gonna add a little wrinkle right here in his armpit. I'm just kind of making like the letter V. I'm gonna do the same thing here on his leg. I'm just kind of making the letter V on the end. It really helps to make it look like it's folded. And then here where his chest is, I'm just gonna draw a few curved lines on the side for his ribs. And right here in the middle, you can add a little wrinkle for his body because his skin is kind of folded up underneath. All right, now that our tree frog is done, can you believe that we're done drawing this? tree frog, I'm going to talk to you about color because when I was designing my tree frog, I thought he looked so beautiful, just black and white like this. I think he was great. And then what I did is I took the paper and I laid it on my window. Can you see my door back here? I don't know whether you can see it. It's kind of open, but I set it on the window and the light shining through, I was able to place another piece of paper over it. Let me get my paper and trace my drawing again. So I put it on a sunny window, my first drawing, and I laid my second drawing over it and I drew it again. So I just retraced my lines again and then I colored it. So let me show you my coloring job. So I use my plain old crayons. I keep them in a little cup when I'm working. You can keep them in the box if you'd like to. These are just my Crayola crayons. I think I bought mine at Target forever ago. And the colors that I used were yellow, and light green, and then I use a little darker green around the edges. I want you to see that. I'm gonna hold it up close so you can see that. Now, I wanna to talk to you about his coloring because this is really an, a neat thing about the uh, red-eyed tree frog. He has no defense mechanism. Some frogs can secrete a poison out of their skin for if an animal's trying to eat him, but he doesn't have any type of defense mechanism. What he uses is just his coloring for a defense mechanism. So what he does is he, when he's sleeping, remember I told you he closes his, his body up, his hands are tucked underneath his body, his eyes are closed. He has a third eyelid and that third eyelid is called a, oh golly, 
think it's called a nictitating, yes, a nictitating membrane. There's a third eyelid that slides up when he's sleeping and it looks kind of like the pattern of a leaf. So we only have two eyelids, a top one and a bottom one, but a red-eared tree frog has a third one, a nictitating membrane, and it slides up to protect his eye. He can actually see through it. So if he's sleeping, he can still see through his eyes, even though his eyes are closed, and he can see a predator coming. And what he does is right when they get close, he very quickly pops open his big bulging red eyes. Let me show you the photograph so you can see. Can you imagine? So you think it's a little bump on a leaf and all of a sudden those big bulging red eyes bulge open with this bright, bright red. And then he flails out his arms and his legs. So this electric blue shines on the inside of his legs and his arms here. And then he's got these flashes of bright orange fingers and toes. That instantaneous pop of all that color startles the predator that might have been coming to eat him like a vine snake and that split second that when he does that it gives him just that split second for him to use the superpowers of jumping to be able to jump away from his prey and we talked about how far he can jump so he takes that one second to go pop with his eyes his hands his feet and then he does this amazing jump 150 times his length to get away from his prey. I just think that is a really cool trick that he can do. So back to his coloring. I used crayons. I colored with a little bit of yellow first. So I just used yellow to color in a light shade of yellow over his legs and even across his chest and his tummy, especially over his hands. That was my base color. Then I went in with green. Now the green that came with my little box of crayons, I have three different greens that came with my box, but if you have a smaller box that only came with dark green like this, that will work great because you already put your yellow down first. You're gonna layer a layer of green over it and then take your green and brush it a little bit harder around the edges. That's what's gonna give you kind of that neat shaded, shaded look. All right, once I'm done with green, I put a little green on his legs here. I just looked at a photograph of the red-eyed tree frog and that's where I was copying from. And then he has this beautiful electric blue here. So I just used my blue crayons and colored that electric blue in here. And then for the orange on his feet and toes, I started, remember, with my yellow base first and then I went in with orange colored it bright orange, and then I layered a little bit of red around the edges to put a shadow in. And that's how I did my frog. Now the shading underneath him, I taught you this trick the last time that I told you we I don't ever use black by itself for a shadow, it's too dark. So what I do is I add a little bit of blue to the black when I'm coloring it very softly, or gray will work too, to give him a shadow underneath. You don't need to do that. I also shaded a little bit around his back legs here and on the insides of his arm. And then for his tummy, you could leave it white, but what I did is I put a little bit of this kind of brown color right here, very, very softly over the yellow, and then I brushed the brown a little harder around the edge. So that is how I did his body. Now his eyes, which are red, obviously, red-eyed tree frog, I didn't just go with red. I also used a hint of orange to make it a little lighter at the top. So I used orange and maybe even a little bit of yellow would work in there. And then I put red at the bottom to make it a little darker. Now I'm gonna show you one more coloring job that I did and that was with colored pencils. Now colored pencils are my favorite. I'm gonna show you the two side by side so you can see the difference. This is crayon. This is colored pencil. So colored pencil is a little different. It's not quite as waxy as crayon. And uh, by the way, the colored pencils I'm using are nothing fancy. It's just my box from Target. I think it's where I bought them. Uh, just Crayola colored pencils. And when I colored this, I did the same exact thing as I did with my crayon. So I put my picture up to the window, retraced my original drawing again, and then re-outlined it with my black, I used a black colored pencil for outlining it, and then I went over everything with colored pencil. Exactly the same way I did crayon, but it just has kind of a different look. I know I'm getting a glare in here, but I think you can see it right there. So crayon, colored pencil, you can see the difference. All right, did you have fun learning about a red-eyed tree frog today? I know I did. I am getting really good at learning about animals now that we're doing this. 
So what I do is I do a lot of research by looking online, I read about the animals. And so it's really helping me to become a little bit more knowledgeable as we do this. And I hope you're learning some facts as well as doing some drawing. Now, I will ask you only one favor before I say goodbye, and that is to ask you to please subscribe to my channel and also invite a friend because I think it's important that you invite people. If you're enjoying doing something, um, have your friends join you. Maybe your mom or your dad could join you as well or a sibling and ask them to come along and try it with Mrs. Torres. So I hope you're having fun on my drawing channel and I will see you for our next lesson, which will be letter A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We're doing G for the next one. I'll see you soon.